This is Twit. Uh, AMD Ryzen 5 2500U mobile APU performance. We're talking Raven Ridge here as in... Um, I, I, I'm excited about this, right? We've been talking about this for a while. Um, you know, this is this is uh, a quad-core mobile CPU with Radeon Vega graphics uh, in a 15-watt TDP, which basically means uh, GPU performance, a little bit better, hopefully, than Intel. You know, that's pretty exciting, right? Of course, we also at CES, you know, had the confirmation on the Kaby Lake G platform, the Intel with the uh, Vega graphics. Um, but Ken over at PC Per got to play around with a uh, HP Envy X360 laptop that was run on a Ryzen 5 2500U. Probably not with the SSD it's going to ship with. There's some questions about that, but 8 gigabytes of DDR, 15.6 inch uh, 1920 by 1080 monitor. Um, the storage, which is kind of a question mark, that one terabyte Samsung PM961 NVMe SSD. Um, but, uh, you know, a pretty good set of specs, $1,329, which is kind of typical for a, for a fairly... Uh, uh, well, it, you know, I thought it was thin and light, but it looks like it's weighing in at 4.75 pounds, so it's not that light. Um, but the the caveat on this one was the power consumption. The chart you're looking at right now, that top set of bars uh, is a Ryzen 5 2500U and that HP X360. You know, and you're maxing out at like 41 to 43 watts if you're looking at Counter-Strike or Rocket League. Um, the one that's higher at 52 watts, that's a... Uh, Core i5-8250 system with a GTX uh, 150 inside of it, I want to say, or an MX150 inside of it. So that's a discrete uh, NVIDIA graphics package, if I'm not mistaken. So the the power is considerably higher, um, about 30% higher than most of the other uh, uh, GPU, like CPUs sitting in that space. Um, but the, G the CPU and gaming performance is not bad. Um, not epic, but certainly hanging there with a Core i5-7200 or a Core i5-8250U. Um, you know, looking at single-thread performance, uh, multi-thread performance, um, you know, a little bit lagging. Um, but uh, gaming performance looks much. solid, though. And I think, yeah. I mean, for me personally, I, I don't think I'll ever buy a notebook that weighs more than three pounds again. So being able to get these kind of... <laughs> Being able to get these kind of components crammed into thinner, more power efficient designs is where right. I want it to go anyway. I'm I'm currently using Intel integrated graphics and I ain't getting anywhere near any of those levels of performance in my current right. relatively new notebook. But at the same point, uh, I'm also rolling around with something that weighs over a pound less. So, yeah, that's a big deal. I mean, it's been interesting. Like I'm looking at I should point out the Cinebench. It's actually ahead of that Core i5 8250U. I always forget. Uh, which one is higher and lower in that one? But it's kind of crazy to look at those 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 gaming numbers look pretty good. Um, you know they're obviously getting beat by the one with the discrete graphics, but you're looking at a pretty good you know compared to the other you know compared to the four i five eighty two fifty U, it's delivering a, a you know a, a pretty nice jump in performance again if you go to discrete graphics it gets crushed but that's a, a kind of a totally different market segment um so it's it's good uh i don't think we have final pricing numbers on this um uh although it seems to be pretty solid in that 1300 dollars range i'm kind of curious to see how many vendors adopt this and when it comes out and i mean it, it's also funny that you mentioned about the performance on the ultralight laptops because I got to take a look at what should have been a significantly faster processor inside of a uh, Microsoft uh, laptop. And what was amazing is because it was fanless, um, it could not run that Core i7 processor that, the, at anywhere near the top speed. So oh, I bet. You know, my, my technically, you know, several... You know, it was, you know, compared to the, the slower processor in my XPS 13, which has a pretty robust cooling system, the performance of that uh, that uh, Microsoft laptop was <laughs> was considerably lower. And that was um, that was surprising to me. Um, you know, well, if, I mean, if you if don't have that active cooling, you would assume that yeah. you're never going to hit the peak performance of that thing unless unless you're using it out in the cold or something. But that's, yeah, that's a good point. That's, it, it's nice you to know. have no sound coming from a PC, but even my right. ultra ultra lightweight notebook has a little fan built into it that I do hear kick up whenever I'm doing anything uh, CPU intensive or GPU intensive. So 
it's, I think it's just frustrating at this point, when, when you're looking at like a $3,000 laptop that performs considerably slower than a laptop that sells for just over half the price. You know, <laughs> your $3,000 laptop with a faster processor should be at least as fast as something that costs uh, considerably less.